Greetings, crew members. We're back with another episode of Stargating, and I'm Chris. I'm Tamara. And today we're talking about episode 106, The First Commandment. Somebody's gone a crazy and declared themselves God. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. It's not. It's probably at this time the producer of the show because they were having some moderate success in their first season. Yeah, they got like fifty extras for this episode. Yeah, Chris. this episode is a notable improvement in a lot of ways. It's still not there and still not good, mm -hmm. but it is a notable improvement. And uh, yeah, I think it has a lot of good stuff going on in it. Uh, a lot of uh, dumb Sam stuff. A lot of dumb Sam stuff. A lot of plot contrivance. Yes. Um, they really wanted to make this episode happen, and they kind of just worked yeah. backwards from what they wanted. This is, again, also very... Uh, like the Caveman episode we just yeah. covered. <laughs> yeah, just just like those last couple episodes, this is also very nipping at the heels of, like, Star Trek episodes in similar vein. Yeah. Uh, but we will elaborate further and get into it. Uh, let's talk about uh, the First Commandment. Tamara, are you going to give us a little bit of a summary, and we'll... we'll jump off that mm -hmm. so we get a cold open i love cold opens and i i love yeah. the stargate cold opens i think that they do a good job most of the time and this is one that pretty much sets up the episode for you yeah um and where it's exciting. they there are two people they are running from a group of of seemingly like tribal people you can tell basically from the second you see them that they're sgc like they're from stargate command yeah they're an sg team well, they're wearing like, like military fatigues yeah they're military fatigues and they're the gear that you see later it all kind of just screams this is stargate so you're like okay unknown stargate team got it um and they and i kind of forgot just how many of non-SG teams you see in this first season, but this is like the third one. Yeah, it's a good way to expand out the world, to really feel like this this is just a full operation and it's not just our team that we're following. Uh, you know, and we're following SG-1 because they're the first team, obviously, and they're the best and mm. they're our main characters, but mm -hmm. like it does feel like you could have an episode just following SG-7 or something. I wonder if there is one and we just don't I'm certain it. there are episodes like that. Yeah. But we will get to those when we get to it. For now, I have mm -hmm. to talk about this one. I have to. This one is better than the last couple. But yes. it's still not great. It's It's got mm -hmm. some things. This, uh, as you said, this setup is very good and exciting. Yes. So they're running away. Uh, one of the two drops the transponder that they use to get them to open the iris. This Which is, I, I think, think, the first time they set that up. Yeah, I think this is the first mention of the iris. Yeah, this is the first time they mention specifically that the transponder is there to get them to open the iris so that that way you don't have your atoms collide with a steel wall. Yes, you transmit your code to them through the Stargate. They accept the code. They go, okay, that's SG whatever signing in. And then they open the iris so that you can walk through so that you don't get smushed. Yes, or you don't <laughs> just have a whole crap load of Jaffa flooding into the gate room all of a sudden. Yes, yeah. so uh, it's, it's a good thing <clears throat> to have and smart. If only they had some protocols for plagues, but whatever, it's fine. Maybe like a nice lanyard that keeps it wrapped around your wrist. <laughs> yes, but he keeps running and he, he, he finds the transponder. They both keep running. Um, and the guy who dropped the transponder gets hit by a blow dart. We and know he's named Frakes. Yes, his name is Frakes and he goes down. And his buddy, like, turns around is like, oh, no. And then he's like, I, go, run. So he keeps running. They get to the start. He gets to the Stargate. He turns it on. And then it it basically cuts back to poor old Frakes, uh, who is sitting there. Darted. Blow darted. Yeah, he's like. He's, blow darted by mud men. Yes. They, <laughs> well, they're not mud men. They're wearing mud masks. Like the big helmets. Yeah. Yeah, they've got these big helmets that they've clearly they're made like, out of like paper mache or something. They look like, uh, I, I think they're like the Easter Island tribes have a similar headdress that they They're wear. Cool. You can see it. I think they used They're it in a creepy. Call of Duty campaign recently for like oh, warriors great. through the centuries or something. Cool, Call of but, Duty. But yeah, they look creepy. They look weird. And, and they also make sense in universes where you'll find out from the setup of this world too. But but yeah, Frakes is, uh, he's, he's fucked. Yeah, he's fucked. Uh, and they, they get him. They're holding him down. They're basically like, ah, oh, we got him. And then this dude shows up in a robe and he, he's got like dog tags hanging out. So he's very clearly from the same SG team. 
And he's like, oh, Franks, how could you do this to me? Blur, blur, blur. And then he shoots him in the fucking head. And it's like, oh, okay. And it just cuts back to his buddy who is about to go through the Stargate. And and then and then we, we cut. Yeah, they leave it there. And they but leave it there. In time for the uh, wonderful <laughs> opening. <laughs> yeah. The the actor, by the way, the guy that uh, the robed actor, the guy that uh, shot Frakes in the head. Uh, most people would recognize him as, I guess, the dad from Boy Meets World. If you're yes. old like us, yes. But he's a he's a really good actor. He's been in a lot of stuff. I think he was a leverage villain in one of the leverages. He was, yes. yeah. He was the he was a leverage vi- villain in the episode where. The mark gets murdered in the middle of the con, and then a cop is is like looking into uh, fucking yeah. Nate. Which is funny because at first I thought he was Superman's dad, but then I was like, no, no that's that's the guy who played Bo Duke, uh, who was also a leverage villain. <laughs> <laughs> so many like and also again connection to leverage in Star leverage. Trek's Frakes. Uh, we didn't mention the name Frakes. Must be a reference because it's very specific. Frakes. To Jonathan Frakes, a.k.a. Commander Riker. Yes. And, you know, his story But, like, then he gets fucking, like, murdered. killed. In That's because very... Stargate's saying it's better than Star Trek, even mm. though we're just borrowing the same plot. Um, from the first it's first season. season. Let's not. Yeah, well, Star Trek's never go. traditionally hot in its first season. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, no, so that's our kind of our cold open. It's it's exciting. It sets up the plot well because you, you have that kind of the questions, right? Like Yeah, you're like, okay, what happened here? Like the guy, when he takes the robe off, it's very obvious that he's an SG member and also uses a pistol to kill the guy, too. Mm. So that's another sign that this is one of their own, right? So yeah. right away you're like, oh, no, Uh-oh. an SG commander went insane. Well, that's not the first thing you think. The first thing you think is, oh, no. And then the second thing you think is, is that the dad from Boy Meets World? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. So then the, the the you know, our amazing theme song ends. Uh, and SG-1's walking through the gate. And they find the, I think it's the supplies thingy that they must have brought in with them like it looks like a melt but it's strapped with a bunch of like supplies i think yeah um so i'm pretty sure it's their like supply well, yeah it's like some kind drone. of like a supplies rover so kind of implying they were supposed to be here for like a longer term mm-hmm. mission um sg1 doesn't usually spend more than a week when they come through the planet did they say specifically like they were supposed to meet up with SG-9? No, they or? said that they say later that they got SG-9's signal when they sent through the iris code and then nobody came through. So they were like, what the fuck? And so they sent SG-1 through to see why no one came through after they So they, they are specifically the investigating this. Yes. And he says that SG-9, you know, never showed up. And so that's when it's revealed that this is SG-9 that we were mm-hmm. following in the opening. And uh, they make a little hand wavy conversation about how, huh, this sure does look like the back. Oh, they do. Of yes. They immediately <laughs> in world lampshade. The fact that we are once again, three episodes in a row wandering through the Vancouver woods uh, because they, I think it's Daniel Jackson or something. He's like, Oh, it's Abydos must be the outlier. It's cause it's expensive to yeah. film on location. Well, and, because it's expensive <clears throat> to haul in all that fucking dirt to the lot. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you know, Oh, trees, you know, these trees much match. And I, they maybe mention something later where Teal'c is well, like. Well, Teal'c says that like they were all terraformed by the Gwauld and chosen by the Gwauld, so, so that it makes would make sense. sense that they would have similar environments because the Gwauld would terraform them to be that yeah. way, which is fine. But like, also, it still every just planet looks has like Vancouver. Trees. <laughs> yeah, every planet has giant coniferous trees. <laughs> just looks like Vancouver. Just looks like the backwoods mm-hmm. of Vancouver, because that's what it is. But it's fine, whatever show. They do some better job. Later. on. Well, in, in this episode on production design. It doesn't look like, like last episode was kind of egregious. The bone throne. We'll get to the yeah, bone yeah. throne. Yeah, yeah. The production design in this one is better. Yes, but like it's still, this opening, it's still just trees. So they come in and they're like, okay, we're, we're going to look for SG-9. Um, we're, There's we're, no birds. Yes, Sam notes that there are no birds. And you find out why. Uh, a little bit later. Uh, but Sam does note that there are no birds and Teal'c is all like, oh, eyebrow of in- intrigue because that's, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of eyebrow acting Again, we're moving Teal'c away from being Spock, but we're not fully away not from being fully Spock. Not fully away from being Spock yet. Um, and then Daniel also at one point says th- just this brilliant thing where he comes out 
and she's like, so, you know, what if there are people around? And he's like, well, the Stargate is, is so out in the middle of nowhere. I doubt that it plays a significant role in anyone's culture. And it's like, my man, it has played a significant culture in literally every culture you've come across yeah, it's so a, far. Yeah, it's a big giant ring that's a gateway to the... Uh, to, to the, the gods. World. Yeah, <laughs> like, in it's every just, civilization. It's, it's mattered in it, every it's, single planet. It's in and the middle like, of the woods because we haven't got the production money to build villages built around it yet. We will have that later in a couple of Later, episodes. yeah. Yes, but not yet. Not yet. Um, so it's like I rule of the highest order, Daniel. Sam remarks there's no birds, like you said. Uh, and then Daniel wanders off because he learned nothing, I guess, from last episode when he got Why kidnapped. Why would he? He got to be a caveman and la- get laid. Uh, and so he just wanders off and then is immediately threatened by the guy who we thought went through the Stargate at the end because he put yes. the code through. But it turns out did not and instead decided to stay on the planet for reasons. I'm sure he had a reason for not just going back and being like, yo, this is it's probably like, It's very personal vengeance. I, yeah, I buy also, that a little bit more than what happens next. But it's also like, my dude, you know what would be a really good way to get vengeance? If you went back to Stargate Command and told all the people with the guns and the bombs... Yes. That this guy had decided to become a god. Can we haul a drone through the Stargate? Right? Like, if we walk through with bombs and go, look, we have bombs. We will we're also talk about the lack him. of equipment they yeah, bring later. Yeah, we're going to talk about this. It's, it's egregious. A, yeah. Jack, it's really funny because he comes up and he puts, like, a, it's a gun, right? And Daniel goes, don't shoot. And then no, Jack No, I think he holds just, a knife to. No, I think he says don't shoot because then Daniel says don't shoot to him. And then Jack comes up right behind with a gun and puts it to Connor's head. And he's like, it's good advice. And it's like, okay. And also, wow, that's an unintentionally funny still frame from that fucking because it's like he's got a gun to daniel's head and then daniel's perfect like meme there te- template then, yeah it's like a perfect meme template and nobody uses it but they should he's also should got start that, it. that leaf on his lip that i cannot be yes not he's got a leaf by. stuck to his lip this connor guy because he was hiding in the leaves like rambo and he pops up he's got a leaf stuck to his lip and he's breathing really heavy and so the leaf keeps going up and fluttering mm. and then falling back down it's like you're very dedicated, Mr. Actor Man, but it's distracting as hell. Yeah. yeah, he's a he's a good actor. He's been around for a long time. His name is Roger Cross. Roger uh, Cross. Yeah. He uh he has like been in X Files, been in Stargate, he's been um, I think just about every video game ever made as a voice actor because he's got one of those deep Yeah, doesn't he have wasn't he in voice. a bunch of was it what video game did he do a bunch of voices in that we played? You uh, mentioned I, it, and I was like, "Oh, well, I know, I know, he was in Bioshock Infinite. Yes. I know he was uh, That's my... some of the guards, oh. like some of the various guards that you fight and kill. Oh, because really? he has a lot of a lot of the time. The credits I read are like additional voices by, but yeah, this guy he's been in sci-fi TV for eons. He used to be in this TV show I watched back in the day called Fifth Wave." Which is just another in the long list of these forgotten sci-fi television shows from the 90s that like were like, oh, let's be X-Files. But I guess in the case of Fifth Wave, let's just be X-Files. Yeah, let's just be X-Files. <laughs> yeah, it's... it's not even like a butt situation. It was just X-Files. I think well, it had to do with Nostradamus. Well, based off of X-Files originally. That's yeah. kind of what he had. Like, he wanted an X-Files theme. Yeah. The feel. Well, they told him he had to have a missing dad, but we'll save that for our supernatural podcast sometime in the future. Yeah. Oh. Oh, don't even tempt me. 15 seasons of that? Yes, Ugh. sir. I gave up after 6. I gave up in 10, but that's because I was a diehard fan for a long time and I stopped after they So I guess spoiler this is warning. the supernatural No, podcast. hold on. It's just real quick. I stopped after spoiler warning for something that happens in season 10. So if you really care, just like, you know, skip forward a little bit. But I stopped watching when I found out that they killed Charlie. And mm-hmm. then I was like, oh, so this television show is now just killing off side characters to create man pain because there's no actual stakes because we know that our main characters are incapable of dying. So what's the next <laughs> subject on Supernatural Gating? Nothing. The next thing <laughs> that we're talking about is that it's just like kind of ridiculous that, that Daniel wandered off again. Oh, yeah. Like we, he's like, guys, They play guys? real. They play real close 
blocking and hiding with Daniel this entire scene. Oh yeah, because there's there's a conversation coming up. So Connor passes out in Jack's arms because he's been running on adrenaline this entire time. And now he's like, I'm safe, huh? Um, which I thought was very fitting and I liked it. Uh, and then they drag him off to the Stargate. They give him some food and water and they're like, hey man, what the hell happened? And he's like, yeah, so our commander, Hanson, went insane and has installed himself as a god. And they're like, okay. Yeah, I like, like the little moment where he's like, we got here and they thought we were gods. And it was just like, because you came through the Stargate. Yeah. It's like, yeah, no, everybody thinks we're gods when we come through the Stargate. <laughs> but then he's like, no, you don't get it. He believes it. Yeah. And it's like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so you're like, okay. And this is the part where people, st- where you start thinking in your head, Cool. Let's go back and tell General Hammond. But no, literally no one's going to do that. Because first Jack's like, okay, so you're going to go back and you're going to tell General Hammond. Well, you're gonna, and he, Carter's going to take yeah, him back. Yeah, Carter. He's like, you're going to take him back and you're going to go back. And she's like, no, I'm not. And he's like, that, I'm I'm like your, your commanding well, officer, we get the plot so you have of to. why she doesn't. And the reason why is because she was engaged to this man and then broke off the engagement. She's, she says some really clunky dialogue where she's like, that's why I gave back the ring. And you're like, oh, okay. So, yeah. like, uh, you couldn't just have... Maybe it was a high school promise ring. <laughs> you couldn't just have Jack be like, look, I'm not going to send you into active combat with your ex-fiance. It's just not happening, which would be a fully fine and valid way to explain that to the fucking audience. Not yeah. I gave back the ring because I knew what he was like. And it's like, OK, whatever, Sam. Also, <sighs> yeah, Sam was once again involved in the plot just because of a man. Um, she definitely gets kidnapped but, again this episode. But it is real, real funny because they're like, well, you go back, uh, Carter. Uh, no, you go. And she's Con- like, no. no. Connor's Connor- like, no, I want vengeance and I know the terrain, which, like, it's the terrain of every other fucking planet they've been on so far, y'all. Yeah. It's the same terrain. You just had a hand wavy explanation about that, but whatever. Yeah. So he's like, I know the terrain and also it's personal, so I want vengeance. And it's like, yeah, no, yeah. you should send that guy back, but he doesn't. And then Sam's like, I'm also not going because I know him and maybe I can get us in without a firefight. And it's like, okay fine Sam whatever and then the whole time they're having this conversation about if they should send somebody back about who they're gonna send back and why it's not gonna be Sam or this guy who's or horribly Teal'c, injured obviously. or Teal'c because he's combat approved Jackson's just gone out of he's frame he's literally hiding he's hiding behind them like he's like crouched down I guess investigating the body of Frakes I guess because he shows them Frakes' body and he's like Hanson did this um, and they're like having this whole conversation about who are we going to send back to talk to some command? Oh, well, this guy's not going. And it's like, Daniel, send Daniel. Daniel back. Send the weedy archaeologist. Why is Daniel here? You kind Send the of guy who has him. nothing to add to the situation. Yeah, right? Like, send, it, it's Daniel. The answer is Daniel. Send Daniel back. I guess in the loosest sense, Daniel's like their translator if they run across a different. Pafa, <laughs> though. But everybody just speaks that. English. And also, this guy has been living on this planet for, like, weeks and been entrenched with the locals. He probably already knows a fair amount of the language. And if you're going to keep the injured dude anyway because he wants his vengeance or whatever, then, like, that's a better reason. It's like, and also, it's, I think they're not really grappling yet, writing-wise, with the fact that the Stargate is a push-button instantaneous transportation technology because mm. they treat it a lot of times like they have to take a fucking shuttlecraft back or something yeah, or no. like they have to wait for someone to come pick them up. No. Like a lot of the times you Daniel could just back. turn it on, go back, pop, even just pop your fucking head through it and be like, hey, guys. Uh, you can't, though, because you it sucks you through at a certain point. And also, if you were to do that, you can't just go back through because no, it doesn't work But you could still way. come through and then they could dial it up. You had a good point, though, about electricity. <laughs> Yes, I was talking about how, well, like, maybe the reason why they don't have, like, just a whole bunch of SG teams standing by is because it's the first year of the program. Yeah. And, like, even just turning the fucking thing on for a couple minutes costs them half the yearly budget because... Yeah, it's like $2 million to fucking turn it on. Turn it on once. So it's like, no, no we gotta be real, like, stingy with how many times was... we go back. But, like, this would be a time you send them back. I always wondered about... 
how you could get a dial you would basically have to steal a dial home device from a gate that would then become unusable but could you turn a gate on and then disconnect the dial home device and bring it through the gate with you and then you have the dial home device hooked up to your gate well they do they when they have to switch with the 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 arctic one when yeah but that one didn't have a dhd one. did it We'll no. get to it. We'll talk about that I one. I don't think so. that one had a DHD, but we'll talk about that. That's but that's my thing. point. They use that one with their dial home device. Yeah, but they they're the human's dial home device is like a, it doesn't a matter. Room it's the first year episode. You're right. We're getting too <laughs> we're getting too into it. Yeah. But yeah, so Connor <clears throat> buries Frakes. Um, which Kicks some dirt over his which bones. No, he's like he's like grabbing like like weeds and stuff to put over him like he's trying um and he's like trying to dig and it's really funny because what's left of frakes is what is clearly some rib bones it's just some rib bones from yeah. like a pig roast or something and they, they just charred yeah and he looks like there. uncle owen and aunt Baru. and then the the, the 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 pair of um fucking no he doesn't he just looks like a pile of bones yeah you're right means... uncle owen and aunt Baru were actual skeletons which means that that fire must have been burning really hot for a really long well, time have we discussed the sun well, yes, that is that is the other thing that he talks about is how the sun here um, is hyper radioactive. It's, it's really unstable. bad. It's unstable. And so you cannot come out in the sun. And the people here live in caves, which he thinks used to be mines. And they only come out at night because the daytime is so bad that it will yeah. burn your skin. Like this, and you can even see yeah. on his face when you first meet him, he's got some burn marks on his nose. He's got some on his cheeks. They're really good looking. But it, was, it looks pretty good for what we've I would got. even say it's like comparable to the movie Sunshine, where they like, they're like astronauts heading towards the sun. So like over the course of the film, a lot of them get like that skin burn. And like I think that uh, it's it's comparable to that. And it's a good idea, too, because like... You can see it in the design of everything, like the mud helmets that they wear are clearly protective from the sun, and you know the where they when they end up getting to that quarry section, mm -hmm. the quarry section looks good. It looks different than just Vancouver. Yeah. Yeah. So then they you you get you get a quick cut after they have this whole conversation where they're like, well, I'm not going back even though I'm injured and traumatized, and Sam's like, well, I'm not going back even though like. I used to love and have sex with this guy. And then Daniel hides. Uh, and you have a quick cut to uh, Boy Meets World Dad. And he is dramatically looking over his domain of rocks. And like and, a, and people who are trying to build a temple for him, I guess. Yeah, that's, that one matte painting of the temple Yes, they the have. one matte painting of the temple. And his second in command, his, his Stargate counterpart guy, his, basically his Sam... Uh, is standing there and and he's just like oh you know uh, the the gate turned on they sent SG one and he's like yes I knew they would and it's like okay great so like he knew that they were gonna send Stargate and so like he kind of let the other guy go and yada 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 blah 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 um so and then he very dramatically rips his dog tags off and throws them on the ground and it's yeah. like I don't know why you didn't do that sooner but he's sure. also like doesn't he want to work them harder too. Uh, no, that's not until later. Oh, yeah. That's the daytime shot. This is the nighttime oh, shot. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah, that was our first establishment And he's shot like, that. he says that he has hundreds, maybe of th thousands of followers. How many do we see, Chris? Like 50. Like 50. Yeah, I mean, like, well, you know, they're yeah, all in caves, like, I guess. Don't say hundreds, maybe thousands. Just say mm -hmm. like 50. Like 50 people. Yeah, there's like 50, 50 people. 50 very sunburnt, tired people. Yes. We could easily overpower them with non-lethal methods. Most of them haven't eaten anything except for rocks in days. Yeah, like the guy's been working them to build his weird temple. Which, by the way, looks like just a bunch of Jenga blocks on top of yes, each other. It I'm does like, not I saw that. I saw the image good. of it. And I'm like, that does not look structurally sound. But no, I guess that's what you get good. when like a, a military guy and a bunch of you know tribal people try to build something with no understanding of architecture yeah. or structural soundness. Yeah. So after traveling for most of the day, because that's when it's safe for them to travel, because the people who live in the caves don't come in at night stargate sg1 makes their uh camp and they set up a perimeter that has like lights like motion lights and like an alarm that goes off a really loud alarm and uh they test it out by chucking a rock at it and then uh it's daniel like complains about the 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 food a little bit and then he asks um 
Connors, who is the guy who was being it's sunburnt. hard not to say Carter, right? Yes, it is hard not to say Carter. Uh, it might have been a Connors, mistake. Connors, he asks Connors, how, how did this happen? And Connors basically says, we showed up through the Stargate and they all thought we were gods. And then he said, well, it'll be safer if I pretend, if we pretend we are gods. And Frakes, who was their, their anthropologist, their version of Daniel, agreed. He was like, yeah, it might be safer if we pretend that we are gods. So, like, I guess there might, maybe there was a little bit of tension and that hostility might have been a, from them. Maybe, but that might have been um, a bad decision on that guy because that should be the first rule in the SG handbook. Rule number you one, do, that. do not pretend directive. to be a god. Prime directive, do not pretend to be or gods. Or first commandment, if you will. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so Hansen doesn't deny it. He says it might be safer. Frakes agrees. Uh, then Hansen says... That uh, they are like the leadership that th- these people need to quote unquote take back the planet, which like take it back from what, right? You're not really sure. What do you mean take back from what? Doesn't seem like there's anybody here except for these these native people. He says they've been like yeah hiding um, in caves. So then he goes, uh, okay, well yeah, we are the leadership they need to improve as a society. Basically, a kid wanders off from the caves, gets lost. Hansen's like, I'm going to go out and find him in the middle of the day, which, as we've established, is super radioactive and really unstable and bad times. Yeah, you can survive for, like, a little while in the sun, but it's, like, it's like super intense. Like, if you're outside heat. for seven days straight, you're going to die, and you're yeah. going to come back in blind, is what Han- uh, sorry, well, not Hansen, sorry, not Hansen, Connor says. But the, the kid goes out, gets lost, and he comes back with the kid two days later. And basically, from the time he came back, he was like, no, I am a god. I'm 100% a god. I saved this kid. I'm a god. So some of the people in the tribe were like, "Mm, I don't think he's a god. I think he might be just a person like us. And anybody who said that, he strung up outside for seven days straight. And Connor says that by the time they came in, they were just like charred and they were completely blind and they just died a little bit later. Mm Mm-hmm. And it was like, mm. and, he, and then he also says that he would rather have a bullet than have that happen to him, thus setting up that that is going to happen to him. Because that's how television works. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I would rather have a bullet than go through that. And it's like, oh, I guess Connor's getting strung up outside during the day. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's very uh, well set up. I like when we get to... Boy Meets World Dad. I just keep calling him that. What do they call him in the show? Hanson, right? I like it when we get to Hanson. I believe him as this kind of character. Uh, but yeah, this is a lot of like setup initially on the kind of shit he's done and why these people now believe he is a, a god nurse so willing to die to follow him. Yeah, it's basically all his tech stuff and also helping that kid. And he's charming and charismatic is... is- what he's going for and it works like it's it's convincing but i guess if you had a gun that you could just shoot somebody and make them dead with people would be pretty convinced pretty quickly yeah this is like a it's like a nice level of dark episode this one yeah um and then connor looks off into the middle distance thus proving that he's gonna need some intense therapy after this shit it's probably why we never see him again yeah that guy retired yeah, he's, he's running like, like a gas station. Was somewhere. honorably discharged, and now the VA is paying all of his bills, but not stiffing him over because they want him to keep quiet about Stargate. Then you get a quick shot of Hansen working the cave dwellers too hard. He's like, oh, you know, they're not making much progress, and he's we like, learn why well, you're number- working them yeah. too hard. And uh, the guy goes, we're not working them too long. We can split them into shifts and then and then we can make it so that they're yeah, working Hansen all day. That. And then his second in command is like, you can't, they'll die. Proving why he only has two lines this episode. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of lines because he's, he's a, not that uh, he's a bad. That's like the worst moment of acting the entire episode. Uh, and I think uh, up there in the series, just those two lines are enough to go, wow, you're a. You hey, no man, much. maybe he got better. Maybe he's like just happy. Maybe acting I'll look up his IMDb now. and see if he's in anything. Well, what's this? Oh, he became John Cena. Hey, no. John Cena's like legit. He just but looks like John so Cena me. to me. He did look a little bit like John Cena, actually. You're right. <laughs> um, so yeah, so so 
in the night, uh, SG One is attacked in some choppily edited content. Uh, I combat. actually like that scene. It reminds well, me. Well, it was frenetic, but like a couple times there, I was like, okay, that was too quick of a shot because I have no idea what that was. Yeah. Um, and then they win, obviously, because they have guns. Uh, they, but they somehow just Connor gets taken. Mm-hmm. I don't understand how people keep getting con- fucking kidnapped when it's rocks and sticks and blow darts versus machine guns. But yeah, like, they just okay, always sneak up and go bam, and then just drag you off. That wasn't even what they did though. They had the perimeter and the lights and the sound. I know and we that all just disappeared. We don't see, but and like I assume somebody just knocked him in the head and dra- dragged him off. I'm pretty sure we did see him get knocked in the head and dragged off. But like again. Machine guns, mm-hmm. blow darts. Well, they just shoot them into the air every single time because these military officers have an aversion to killing combatants. Unless they're Jaffa, in which case they will light those guys up. Oh, yeah, they love killing Jaffa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they're, they're like, okay, we're going to work through the night. We're going to work through the day. So that's happening over with Hanson. But meanwhile, we've got our team and they're like, why don't you tell me more about why you were dating this megalomaniac, Sam? Which Sam is like, maybe I just have a soft spot for the lunatic fringe. And it's like, that is... Cut to Jack. Not a great defense of your choices in men, Sam. Mm-hmm. That's Maybe not... I just like toxic men. Yeah, like, maybe I just like the lunatic fringe. And it's like, well, well, well that's not good. <laughs> Like, that's not a good way of putting it. And it literally cuts to Jack immediately being like, I'm looking yeah. anywhere but at them and pretending I'm not listening. Because, like, she's into Jack and they Jack's do, into her. They do talk a bit about this guy and how he was, like, a black ops guy. And uh, Daniel is like, well, it seems like in the military, the more mental problems you have or mental health issues you have, the more traumatic and terrible places they send you. Look back to Jack. He literally but, looks at Jack. But, like, it's, like, again, very, that pre-9-11 way. Like, you wouldn't talk about the guys who went after Osama bin Laden like that on a TV show. No. But essentially, that's what he's doing right now, is he's talking about this man who have, like, done black ops in, like, small nations. And, and that kind of fits with his character, too, in the sense that, like, he is both infantilizing and, and subjugating the people, but also putting them on this pedestal that like he needs to help them and raise them up by being violent and terrible, which is Mm -hmm. again, kind of a a bit of a commentary on that sort of military attitude, but I I wouldn't give the show that much credit, but it's just interesting. Again, very pre nine 11 look at the military as this overly aggressive kind of dumb hostile force that doesn't really serve any purpose except for being a little bit bloated, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. That changed real quick. And and, and you'll even see it in the show. You'll even, even see it in the show. Daniel is like just he's really insufferable. Like I Oh yeah, he's the tweety nerd. I can't stress just how insufferable Daniel Jackson is in these early episodes. It's really bad. He does have one moment in this episode I like, which is where he's like uh, eating something and he goes, this tastes like chicken. And she goes, well, what's the problem? And he goes, well, it's mac and cheese. Yeah, that's right before he asks Connors what's going on. He yeah, that's that's a food. good little moment that shows, like, I think that's the most I've liked this version of Daniel Jackson the entire series. Yeah, I'm having a rough time with this first season. Yeah. But, like, again, Sam's, uh, this, this episode in Sam is not good. It's mm-hmm. bad. Yeah. So... But so the next thing that we do is we're like, okay, we're going to go to the camp where they're building the temple and we're, we're going to work through this. We're going to get through this and we're going to find out what's going on. We're going to do recon. So they show up and Jack is immediately like, okay, I'm going to take off solo. I'll be back in half an hour. I am going to go and do recon because he sees through the binoculars when they're, when they're doing a scan, he sees Connor tied up on the thing. And he's like, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to like figure out what, what the guard situation is. I'm going to be back in half an hour. Yeah. Do recon. He leaves alone with no backup, which makes zero sense. Um, He goes off by himself to do his recon um, and then while he's gone, basically immediately after he leaves, uh, Sam is looking through the binoculars and sees 
the the second in command Stargate guy beating the shit out of this dude. And he says another couple terrible lines where he's like, do I have to make an example of you? Which is <gasps> funny because like just the previous scene, this guy was established as having some care for these people. Yeah, but apparently no. So apparently that melted away real quick. Yeah, so he screams <laughs> at the, the guy and he starts like beating him up. With the butt of his gun. With the butt of his gun, mostly in the ribs and like upper torso. Which will really help with his ability to move rocks. Yes. And I thought actually that the first hit being covered because it was covered by people walking by, I thought that was kind of really well done because it kind of softens, like lets you prepare for what you're about to see. Yeah, I think the see. blocking is very good. Yeah, it was really so. good blocking because you see the second one hit, but you don't see the first one because someone walks mm-hmm. past and it basically covers it up. Um, and I thought that was really well done. But he, he's beating him up, and then Sam's like, we have to go down there and save him. And they're both like, okay, well, you, like, we can, but, like, Jack just left to go do recon. And she goes, uh, well, well, the guy could be dead by the time Jack comes back, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go stop him. And it's like, you're gonna get captured. And she's like, yeah. And then she just goes, and it's like, no, you... You were supposed to be our way in yeah. without a firefight. This now is, you're being taken captive. This is also a point, too, when I'm like, okay, you guys have seriously ill-prepared your equipment because they're scoping this guy on a ridge, and he's just out in the open, and he's very clearly the only other living member of this SG team. Because uh, I guess SG teams are all four-person, right? Yeah. Um, and he's the one with the gun. He's the one who's like basically the authority that's keeping everybody in line. Cause shoot him in the head from 150 Why doesn't meters anybody away? bring a long gun on these things? Where Why isn't is anybody your sniper rifle? Yeah. Like you could just sit on the ridge and like, they've already established. Cause Jack says to Carter earlier in the episode, you know, one way or another, Hanson is either coming back to face court martial or he's not coming back. And you know what that means. Yeah. So they're fully prepared to kill this guy and, yes. and this team. And like, if you just shot that dude and even like these tribal people, if you're worried about them rising up, if the guy who's beating them just suddenly falls dead from nothing, maybe like the sound of the gunshot. So they're like, there was thunder and then he died. <laughs> it's like, OK, you know, clearly God was displeased with him. <laughs> yes. Right. Right. Like- there was a loud sound, and then he dropped dead and was bleeding. Slash had no head anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. There I, is... know, I know it sounds like we're advocating for violence, but against that dude, yes. And also, these are this is the military. These aren't scientists. These aren't people who have not, like, fought wars before. Teal'c has his staff weapons. Teal could probably just hit him with a staff weapon from afar. Like... But Teal'c follows orders, you know? Yes. Teal'c isn't all like, no, I won't go back to the <laughs> yeah. Stargate because I fucked this guy once. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's really bad. There is a graphic I'll have to show you on, like, our Stargating where it's like they proved that, like, an M1... Uh, or no, like an M5 Bradley, like one of those big armored vehicles with machine guns could can fit comfortably through, through the Stargate. Yes, with no problem. <laughs> so they could bring a tank anytime, but they just don't. Just whatever you want. Or even just, like, a Humvee. Like, I don't... You could go through with so much, but, like, they're trying not to scare the locals. But, like, in this situation, go back and get the tank! Yeah, (laughs) overwhelming force. Drive hum. That would be a cool shot, just, like, (sighs) Humvees roaring out of the Stargate. But maybe we'll get that in some adaptation. It's really, really (laughs) egregious in this episode. It is. Like, y'all, go back and get the army to solve (laughs) the problem that the army created. Oh. Not just you and two other people. Do you think people. Bill Clinton's financing that? He's got to get people in Kosovo. <laughs> so Sam goes down without backup, which is stupid. And she's like, I'm going to go down and and beat the shit out of that guy. So she walks up to him. She punches him in the head. He stops beating the guy up um, and then immediately takes her captive because yeah, of he just course gets back he up. He has time to get back up, grab his gun. Hold his gun on her, and she's holding like a machine gun and a rifle and everything. She could just be like, uh, how about no? How about you don't disarm me? How about I take you, you know, captive? Now you're dead. How about I take you captive, very least? Like, don't pick up that gun or I'll fucking kill you. Or I'll shoot you in the face. You know, and uh, then. But it's because she, as we prove later on in this episode, she is a woman and therefore incapable of shooting people. Who deserves shooting? She's a captain in the U.S. Air Force. No, she is a woman first, Christopher. It doesn't matter that she's been training to do this for, like, fucking years. Or that she's clocked more fucking hours in flight 
than anybody else at the table. No, she is a woman, and therefore she is made soft by her heart and her love for her fellow mankind. And so she's incapable of shooting this fucking idiot in the head. Sorry. Sorry. It's really upsetting that, like, she doesn't shoot this or guy. Or even just, like, in the leg or something, right? There are non-lethal places to shoot people. I don't know why you don't just shoot him. Just shoot him. Shoot him in the leg. Shoot him in the leg he and then grab him and be like, okay, I'm dragging you back through the Stargate now. Let's go. And Let's then the go. But no, it's it's bad. And then it just gets made worse because she gets taken to Hanson and his bone throne. And I mean bone throne in two ways because one, it is a throne made of bones. And two, there are three beautiful women sitting at the base of his bone oh, yeah, throne. Oh, yeah, yeah. Another episode of sexual slavery. Fun. Yeah, fun, fun, fun. Super cool. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, 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 Stargate yeah, yeah. and sexual slavery go together like peanut butter and ice cream. I don't know. Uh, I don't like it. And so he's like, look at me. I'm a god. Don't you want to have sex with me? I'm a god now. And then he, like, dismisses the people who are there because she's like, yeah, okay, you're not a god. Um, and he's all like, oh, you know, you're a healer and like, you couldn't heal me. And I'm sitting there going, since when? Yeah. When has Sam ever been a healer? She stopped that guy from getting the shit kicked out of him. That doesn't Poorly. seem like a, like a healer yeah. though. That seems like a warrior, mm -hmm. like a thing that somebody who had power would do. Yeah, no, I agree with you. It's it's frustrating it's whenever really this happens. Bad. Nobody ever shoots people. There's a um No, it's bad. It's really bad because then they do like a few back and forth tortured metaphors about how he's like the bird who could whose wing was broken that you could never yeah, she fix. Wanted to fix and then him. she's like she's like seems like you're flying fine on your own and it's like this is getting I, the rough, dialogue writers. is rough but his performance in this scene is really good he does a good I, job i buy his character as the kind of person who is despite his violence his flaws and his narcissism has that charisma and that like down-to-earth sensibility that draws you in and i think that's like the key to a lot of good cult leader portrayals mm. is to both simultaneously juggle that you know, I'm up here as this grand figure and I have this high opinion of myself, but also like, you know, I like to joke around. I like to say fun stuff and, you know, I'm a little down to earth sometimes and I get it. It's weird. Right. But you got to go with it, you know? So like, it's, I think that's like very good. It's, it's a well done performance. It's like, uh, it shows you why, you know, that uh, someone like that good. could be believable as a cult leader. The entire plot line is frustrating no, yeah. and he's, he's elevating the material, uh, I think. Yeah, he's bringing it up because he's a better actor. And he also, I, it feels a little bit like he knows the show he's on. Because mm -hmm. at this point, the show hasn't done anything, like... Notable. And it's art. just based off of a fairly... Uh, Run of the mill movie, movie from like five years ago. Hey, I liked that movie, but I am not like yeah. Go back to our very first amazing, episode. Incredible movie. I just really like it. It's one of my faves. Yeah. I like the yeah. puppet. Yeah, but <laughs> oh, well, the puppet. Go back to our first episode to hear more about Roland Emmerich's Stargate. Yes, but uh, this episode. Uh, does have some good performances from him. And like I said, I do like the scene in the sense that I like his believability as this character. Yes, he makes it work. What doesn't work is the fact that she grabs a gun off the ground, holds it on him, and then he's all like, well, then you're going to have to shoot me. And she's like, I can't shoot him. Mm -hmm. And you're sitting there like, you were at point blank range. You could just hit him in the head you with can, it. You don't like, what are you doing? Like, this guy is literally torturing people like connor's is out there on a stake right now yeah, you could have rescued him baking right in the sun with your gun you could have you could have saved him and like all those other natives who who the only thing they did wrong was go are you actually a god though and then he was like no you must not say these things outside yeah. with you yeah. like he is actively torturing people right now and she's like i can't shoot him and it, I screamed at the television. Yeah, I get remembers. it. It's, uh, I screamed. To heap the only praise I will ever give on the film Divergent, um, there is a common thing in that movie where the main character constantly gets, like, a gun on people. And they're like, you know, you don't have it in you. You won't shoot me. And then she shoots them. And at the end of the movie, I think it's, like, 
fucking Kate Winslet or something is like has a gun or she has a gun on Kate Winslet or something and she's like you won't shoot me and then she just goes why does everybody keep saying that to me and then shoots him <laughs> like that's I think the only good moment in that movie because it's set up but like I just wish like they'd do something like that where they subvert that trope where yeah it's like, like he's what like you're what, not like, gonna shoot me and she's like I can't shoot him and it's like are you fucking kidding or me or like uh, Halloween 2018 she, she even says in that conversation with Daniel about about what she saw in him. She says the words, I wish I could be surprised that he's done this, but I'm not. And it's like, so like, he's a monster and mm-hmm. he always has been. Yeah, but did he because hit you? you are soft from, from, from womanly softness, you're like, I can't shoot him. Mm-hmm. And it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Claudia Black's she character would have shot him. In the, Claudia Black's character would have shot him before he opened his mouth. She would have been like, oh, great, we're in the cave now. <laughs> Boom. And he wouldn't have gotten his little monologue about how they're like, it's a third world country in a bottle. And it's like, it's a developing nation now, asshole. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, oh, I'm like, I know it was the 90s. They didn't know that time. At the time, it was third world nation. But also, like, it wasn't even it anymore. Was such the Cold War derision. Was over. And then he's like, I can bring them out of it. And it's like, yeah, again, I, I feel like that fits with the character they set up with him because again as I said this sort of the black ops being in you know developing countries and stuff he has that sort of infantilized view of the locals he's a dumb idiot moron too because you start in the cave and you build out moron you build a fucking tunnel so that your people can work and you just like keep building your fucking society outwards from inside it's literally a mine so while this is going on with with him and uh, Carter, we also cut back to the rest of SG One, and I know yeah, O'Neill is not happy. Jack wasn't even gone for half an hour. Yeah. Like Jack was gone maybe 10, 15 minutes, and then well, he, he comes, comes back, back as she's being yeah, like he comes back as she's being captured. He was not gone half an hour. She couldn't wait, and then he's like. Well, it was our only way in the door without a firefight. And it's like, well, like, no, though, because now she's been captured. A firefight with one guy? Yeah, like, it's not a firefight if it's against two people. It's not a firefight when you have long-ranged weapons. You can just plug them from 150 meters away and nobody even sees you. Mm-hmm. You get do a the full math. ghillie seat. Like, come on. Yeah, just Sorry, do the, ghillie suit. Yeah, just do the math. Figure out those parabolic arcs and shit. I'm sure you have <laughs> two or three good snipers on Stargate Command staff. Yeah, it's... it's. What did General Hammond do before he yeah. became a general? It's really funny because, again, it's it's kind of just that 90s limitness, oh, it's, limitedness of it's, the inter- It's military. annoying. So then Daniel does stuff and you find out why they hit him during that scene, which is... They're watching the people and they, they're they like, we have to talk to one of them and, and like get information from them. And they're like, well, any of them are going to give us away. And Daniel goes, well, no, not that guy who was just being beaten in the ribs by a machine gun. And they're like, okay, yeah. So they go off to a river. They find him at the river. He's like washing his hands. And then Daniel comes up next to him and also washes his hands, which like, that is a good idea. Starting it where you're on his level and doing something that he does, it's going to help him be like, oh, he is just a person and not a god. It's going to, like, make you seem more grounded, which is not what Jack and Tilk do, as they are just standing ominously blocking well, his areas of exit. Well, they swoop in on him as he tries exit. to exit, yeah. Yes, he tries to run away, and they're both just standing there with their machine guns and their staffs, and he's like, oh, and you're like, great. You just, like kind of ruined whatever Daniel was doing. But fine. <laughs> like, it's fine. So they talked to this guy. Um, I can't remember his name. Did I write it down in my notes? No. Huh. Usually I write that stuff down in yeah, my notes. Yeah, I think it's, uh, they say it very briefly they at the end. They say it once, basically. At the end. And then they say it again at him. the end. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, uh... But they're like, okay, hi, uh, we're friends, and Daniel's like, this is Teal'c, and he's like, is he a Jaffa? Don't kill me, don't kill me, and they're like, we're not gonna kill you, we're not gods. He's a friendly Jaffa. Um, Teal'c does a terrible job at smiling. Oh yeah, smile, he's friendly, smile, Teal'c, and then it cuts to his face, and it's like, it's like when the Terminator tries to smile in it's Terminator just a grimace. 2. <laughs> it's, just it's just a grimace, and he's like, uh. It's a terrifying, like, rictus smile. And then, and then Jack's like, you're gonna have to work on that. Like, he's like, we're gonna have to work on 
smiling, yeah. which like, oh my god, you're gonna have to work on smiling. And also, fucking Braytac smiles. Other Jaffa smile. Yeah. Why doesn't Teal'c smile? Yeah, that's. Uh, I'm trying to think of. I think it's. Again, His wife smiles. Yeah, they do that sometimes. Where like they they introduce the main character alien, and they're like, "I'm gonna play it this way," and then like the other aliens show up and and don't play it that way. I'm thinking of uh, of Deanna Troy's accent, where it's like <laughs> she's like, "I'll have this weird pseudo British accent because that's what I imagine all Beta Zits to have." And then her mom shows up, and it's like, "No, no other Beta Zits have that accent." For more uh, supernatural gating. The same thing happened with Misha Collins, who plays Castiel. Oh, yes. He showed up and he was like, yeah, I'm going to play angels as they're all like gruff and, and, you know, like, like they don't understand pop culture and they're, they're, they're kind of detached from everything. And then literally every other person who came in and played an angel was like, what's up? I'm crazy and fun. And Hi, I'm like, Bing Bong from, <laughs> from Inside Out and well, I'm an angel. He, he wasn't an angel. Wasn't he in that no, one episode? No, the guy who played the, the, the douchey guy in Ghostbusters was an angel. Oh, yes, yes. Ghost, yeah, yeah. Not the EPA guy, but the other guy. The guy from Ghostbusters 2? Yes. Yeah, the so. bald guy. Yeah, the mayor's assistant. Yes. Yes, that guy. That guy played an angel. I guess I confused him with uh, um, with. There was Richard Uriel, kind. who I don't know who that guy's played by. Um, Balthazar, he's fun. Like, all of them, like, had inflection and spoke with words. Yeah, and he's just like, sentences. well, fuck me, I guess. Yeah, and he was like, <laughs> oh, well, I guess that's what we're doing. Poor Misha Collins. I guess I just accidentally made an autistic uh, angel. Yep, because autism is hilarious. But we'll talk about that in an upcoming video that we're working on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so getting back to stargating, um, this essentially starts to set up the plot because we learn from the uh, the native guy that they they corner, as well as cutting back to Hanson himself, that Hanson has a way to protect everybody from the sun by quote making the sky orange. Yes, he says he makes the sky orange and then he will give them back the planet by taking back the sun. But they have to make their temple thingy to him first. Yeah, but Teal'c says that he knows what this is. Yes, he does. Which is why, like, Daniel's not even needed, really. Once again, because this is the same thing as last episode where they were like, oh, the whatever. And Daniel was like, the gods of the earth. And Teal'c was like, underworld gods, evil gods. Yeah. Like, and so now Teal'c's like, no, I also know what this machine is because I saw uh, the Gould use it. It's a way because to... Because I worked for them. For yeah, it's the like it creates like a, like a stable bubble of, of like shield to protect yes, you. Yes, it from... will basically put them under the dome. Yes. <laughs> that was the joke I made. I was like, now they yeah. get to live on an orange version of Under the Dome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, he's like, and and he's like, this is what it does. And then it cuts back to Sam and Hanson. And Sam and Hanson are like, okay. Uh, he's like, I want you to figure out how this machine thingy works so that I can give people back the sun. And uh, he's, he's like, okay, well... Uh, she's like, I don't know how this works. And he's, she's like, it's not my area of expertise. And he's just like, we'll figure it out. And she's like, oh, okay. And then she goes, well, what do you expect is going to happen after this? And she, he's like, you do this for me and I will let you and your friends go. And, 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 or no, he's like, I'll let your friends go. And she's like, okay, because they're going to get captured. Um, <laughs> so he's like, he's like, I'll, I won't kill your friends. And she's like, whatever. So then um, while she's saying, like, well, why don't you just ask the people who live here how it works? He's like, oh, I'm all-knowing, remember? And it's like, fuck off. You suck. They also don't know how it works because they would have just used it themselves. There's a really great line where she's just like, you can't keep posing as a god. And he's like, I hate that word. I am not posing. And you're yeah. like, uh-oh. He's also okay. got that, like, look to camera thing where he's like, all my life I was looking for God and here I am. He's holding a Bible while he says it. It's like, yeah. oof. Um, but also, he makes it work. He, he does, does a good enough job that you're like, oh, uh, yeah. because yeah, there's a lot of different ways it. you can play this character with that dialogue and I think he kind of finds the right tone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where it's like smug. I guess he's kind of been the best villain like of, the, of the series thus far, right? Yeah. Next to Apophis. Like, I mean, Apophis is good, but like Apophis has that very, just like, I am an evil guy walking around thing. He doesn't well, have a lot Also, Apophis pathos. hasn't done anything yet. Yeah. Other than like, kidnap. Right, but that's the inciting incident. That's yeah. not like anything he's yeah. actually done. Yeah. Like, he hasn't done anything. Like, they, they were going to kidnap people no matter what. It just happened to be Daniel's wife and brother-in-law. Which he's 
giving up talking about, about it again. Yeah. yeah, he keeps forgetting about him, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, he's like, okay, if you, you're gonna fix it for me. And meanwhile, Jack is like, I'm gonna dress up in peasant robes and I'm gonna get Connor out of here because I, I, I can't. AKA, I'm, I'm also going to get immediately captured. Yes, because of course he gets immediately captured. Um, so then they've got Connor and Jack and immediately after Connor and Jack get trotted in, Sam is like, okay, fine, I'll help you make your thingy thingy work. I like how capture rules in this in this universe apparently revolve on the honor system of like, hey, you, I found you. I found you, Jack. Yeah. Jack like, doesn't just, even they try just, to they fight. They just all just casually walk up to Jack and he's just like, yeah. I guess I'm captured. I guess you I'm got, captured You now. got me, I guess I'm it. But again, like, this is the contrivance, right? Like, yeah. we have a contrivance for why Sam gets captured alone so we can have that scene where she's too soft to shoot a man who's actively torturing people. Yeah, there's a contrivance and not going And then there's a back. contrivance as to why she's going to help him because why would she help him? And then there's a contrivance as to why Jack's been kidnapped so we can threaten him at the end of the episode. It's like, it all feels like they had an idea for a scene and then they worked backwards, just like they had the idea of what if everybody turned into caveman, and then they worked backwards. And it's like, that's not how writing's supposed yeah. to work, mostly. Like, you can do that, but that means you have to be really, really careful that you don't have any plot holes. Like, why is Daniel not getting sent back through the Stargate for backup? Yeah, he does nothing this entire episode except for at the, at the end, very when end. end when he gives the lightest of speeches. Which is something that Jack or fucking Teal could have done because both of yeah. them also know that you need two of these devices to make Wouldn't them work. Would have been a better coming from that native guy? Like, would have been better if their, one of their own people was like, hey, it he's It would have not- been, but he yeah. wasn't like, he's, he's, he's like a screen actor, guild actor, but we don't want to have to pay him a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like he's he's unionized, man. Chill out. We only want him for a day. Um, so yeah, he's like, okay, and then and he's she's like, fine, I'll help you. And then she's like, but like, whatever, I'll do it only because of my friends. And at one point, he says to her, "Oh, Sam, it is my genuine hope that you will choose to be my goddess." And it's like, ew, Hanson sucks. Very ew. Ew. Once again, Sam is being brided to a crazy fucking leader. Yeah, that's she, just she's what she's happening. damseled of the highest order. Oh this man, first. the fact that we've barely gotten into it at all and she's been kidnapped twice is uh, <sighs> Yeah, on top of all the time she's taken hostage with the group. I'm not this better start getting better I also better forgot for that they, they lean so heavily on the Jack and Samantha stuff right at the start. Oh, yeah, no, they're, they're they, shipping They were always it planning right on the start. that. Oh, they, yeah, it wasn't something that just, like, naturally came about. It was, like, they were no, they always sh- planning that. They ship that. it. They ship yeah. it hardcore. Um, so he's like, yeah, okay, so you're going to do the tech. You're, you're, you're going you're gonna to fix it for me, and then I'm going to be even more of a god. And it's like, man, Sam, kind of wish you should have shot him now, huh? <laughs> like... Kind of feels like you should have just yeah. plugged him in the shoulder or in the kneecap. You, you don't need kneecaps to live. <laughs> yeah. Um, There's a reason why the mob breaks your kneecaps and not, like, murders you. Because you can't get blood out of a dead... You can't get money out of a dead guy. I like the, the climax. I like that they tip the Stargate onto its side. Well, that's that's what happens next is it, it's basically he's like, okay, I've, I've fixed the machine. It works now. And, and now I'm going to show all of these people that I am their god. And so he has this big speech where he's like, I'm going to send the demons back through the hole they came from, which is the Stargate, which he's tipped it on its side and it's opening like outwards now, which, which is, is cool. cool. Um, and then he's like, I'm going to put them back through the through the hole. And then Sam's like, you said you weren't going to kill them. And he's like, I'm not. And he's just like, she goes, well, you're putting them through without sending the iris code. They'll be atomized. And he's just like, I'm not killing them. That's eh, a real jigsaw moment. The sudden, yeah. yeah. The, the sudden stop defense. is killing them. He's yeah. just like, I'm not killing them. I'm just putting them inside of I'm a not killing hallway them. The bullet of barbed is. wire. Right, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, okay, whatever. And he does this big speech about, I will give you back the sun. And and Jack and 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 fucking Connors are going to get tossed through this hole just as 
Daniel and the 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 cave guy. guy whose name I can't remember. I think it's uh, like you see for something. He says something like that. I'm so sorry, cave guy, that I can't remember your name. Yeah, I've watched it this once. episode he says it three in this times. Scene where he's like, so and so can fire a staff weapon. Yes, and he's he's <clears> like, <throat> they both show up, and he's like, fine, turn it on then. He's like, I will, and then he turns it on. And it doesn't work because he needs two. And then Daniel's like, this is a machine, and anybody can work it, just like how you know this guy can fire this staff weapon that we brought with us yeah. it, it can be used by anyone because we're not gods and then he like signals Teal. and then he it. signals teal who turns on the other machine that they found earlier turns it on um it, it goes up and there's like this orange domey cloud thing that shows up and that's it that solves the sun problem for that like i guess two square kilometers yeah like four oh yeah it's funny because he's like the world seems so big and he's like it's bigger than you can imagine and i'm like it's like four square kilometers under yeah, a dome it doesn't look that big it's big enough that if you signal somebody uh, who has the other device if you like move the devices farther away does it get bigger or is there like a limit there's i guess there must be a limit. a limit but like i bet there's i bet you could move it further yeah, and I bet you the second one of them breaks, too. It's like, because they're not sending Then you're else. fucked, yeah. right? It's not like you're setting them up to succeed. Mm -hmm. Like, they even say, we should, should we come back here and visit? And he's like, I think we've done enough to these people. And it's like, no, you fucked them up. Now you have to fix it. That's yeah. how this works. Yeah. You fuck it up, and then you put in the infrastructure so that nobody can pretend Just to be Captain gods Kirk to them again. Captain Kirk and going by. Yeah, exactly. And you know how much Lower Decks loves that. Yeah. It really helps. Yeah, it really helps later on down the line when they yeah. start worshiping the fucking robot again. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's good. I liked. Um, and then oh, he also gets a satisfying death. He gets it's like he's like fucking President Snow. Yes, they all just grab him and toss him into the Stargate. Yeah, they like mob him and they're like, "Yeah, you suck. You're not, not a real god." Yeah, they're, they're all like, angry. So fuck you. And then she looks sad, and then it's like. So he died anyway. Yeah. So all this work that you did to not kill him, Sam, and he just died anyway. Well, they close out the, the episode with a conversation that both also name drops the title of the episode. Yes, where they're like, what's the first, you know, it's the... No, Jack's like, I know a commandment, and it's a pretty important one. In fact, I think it's the first one. And then she's like, you will have no idols before me? And he's like, okay, so it's not the first one. But it's, thou shalt not kill. It really should be the first one, though. Yes, it should be. But also, like, yeah, thou shalt not kill. The Edo of these military uh, fucking special squads. Again, I'm not mad that the military isn't killing people. I'm mad that she didn't, like... Shoot him in the kneecap or pistol you know whip the, him across the face and, or just let herself get captured immediately. In retrospect, the greatest thing they ever did for this uh, show uh, was invent the Zat Nekata because yes. that immediately removed all of these tiresome conversations yeah. and all of the let's just shoot guns into the air to scare people off stuff. Yeah. Like they, they invent that, I think, at the end of season one. And the it Zat shows. Gun. Ooh, the Zat gun. We have so much yeah. to look forward to. Yeah, they, they invent that. And that's, that's the way they are now able to get around the fact that they could just shoot people. Yeah, she, because... she closes out the they close out the episode basically with Sam being like, I could have shot him. He practically asked me to, but I couldn't. I just couldn't do it. And he's like, you know, it's not a bad thing to not shoot people. Well, he's like, and, yeah, he's like killing is hard. And, and and it's like, man, you you killed so many people. Like, just in the movie, just like so many, like in the movie and in the TV show so far, and like. She's definitely killed people because she's a captain. Yeah, I don't know if she doesn't consider the fact that, like, maybe she was flying bombing raids to be killing people, but, like... She killed so many people! Which, like, for all these people being Air Force pilots, I think it takes until season two to see any of them fly anything. I don't know, man, but I can tell you this much. I, like... This episode <clears throat> was better than the last episode. Yes. And it was better than the last Sam episode. There were moments in it that I really liked. Like when, when Teal'c and the, the, the cave guy that they've made friends with, when they're looking for the, um, other, the, machine. the other machine and they blow a hole in this machine. And it's a perfect circle, which is hilarious to me because that implies that his, his staff... If Just it blows a hole in you, it blows a perfect circle. Yeah. Um, but whatever. Yeah. And and then he, the guy's like, so you 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 defied your gods. 
And then Tilt goes, the beings who I worshipped were not gods. They had tech, and they pretended to be gods, but they were not gods. Yeah. And that was, like, a really... That's a great moment for him. Yeah. He like, also has another little nice. foreshadowing moment when Daniel's telling him the story of uh, of Isaac. Yeah, when they're talking about how... <laughs> Abraham and Isaac, sorry, he's yeah. He's sacrificing people during the day now to make And he looks temple. at him, and he's like, he killed his own son? Because this is, like, we don't know this yet, but Tilk has... Has a son. Yeah, has a son. Yeah. I don't know if the writers know that yet, but it's it's maybe unintentional foreshadowing, but I think it works. Yes. Um, and also, I want to give kudos to Christopher Judge just early enough into this character that he's really got the movements of that staff weapon down. Because when he yes. does, you reminded me when he does blow that hole, the way he like he's holding it like a like a walking stick, and then he's like, "Excuse me," and he just walks off and does that like very smooth spin and. And whip around of oh, it, yeah. and then like you know he's he's he makes that man's practice. Yeah, but with, also wouldn't you if you yeah. had a staff that was your yeah your he makes it look like a natural weapon. weapon when in reality I think it would probably be one of the most unwieldy possible weapons. It's so heavy on the top and bottom. Yeah, yeah, it's like, like it's, yeah, and it's it's like you trying to aim it too because it's just a straight stick, so you're just kind of generally aiming at what you want to die. Yeah, and he makes so, like, it look like he it makes it look like it's an extension. Some yeah. weight to it, not yeah. like it's made out of styrofoam, which is probably yeah. He makes it really does. He does really make it feel like it's an extension of his own body and that he, like, knows how to use it fully. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so he must have spent a lot of time practicing with that stick and hitting but himself in the head. But once again, it's like it's like how they have to remind the actors in Star Wars movies to stop making the noise with their mouths. Oh, the lightsaber noises? Yeah, yes. because, because, like, you've grown <laughs> up as a kid going, and it's like, no, don't do that. We can't Photoshop that out yet. Yeah, we put the no We don't want Obi Wan <laughs> just making mouth noises while he fights for his life. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no. So I think he, I think he, he put a lot of commitment into the physicality of using that weapon, which is, I think, what makes it work. Yeah, I think literally the only characters that they mm -hmm. have any idea of what they're doing with is Jack and Tilk right now. Yeah, I think everybody else is just kind of like. Mm -hmm. He's a nerd. I hate nerds. So that closes out the episode. I think this is. No, I was going to say, I think this is the first episode where you don't see Stargate Command, but that would definitely be Emancipation. Yeah. Uh, but it is, it feels, well, it's way better than that one, obviously. But it feels like the most natural that we don't see Stargate Command. I mean, like yes. that, all that they should have set Daniel back aside. Mm. It really does feel like, you know, it's, it's tightly paced this episode. They should have set Daniel back. Yes. Why didn't Daniel go back? That's a plot hole of the he episode. He could have even been back in time for his big moment in the episode. Like, there's no reason why he couldn't have gone and come back. So like, I don't... what are you thinking as far as rating goes? I have been going back and forth on this, and at first I was going to give it a 2.5 out of 5, because I was like, this is a true middle of the road episode, where it it's not great, but it's definitely better than some of the other ones. Then I was going to drop it down to a two because, like, between the Sam is, once again, her her plot line in this story revolves around men. And once again, she's taken prisoner. And once again, she does nothing when she is a captain in the United States Air Force and definitely could do something. Um, and then... It's even more egregious when you realize that the only reason she doesn't shoot that fucking guy is because she is woman's. Yeah. You think that Jack would have hesitated to shoot that guy? Please. So a two then? Um, no, because then I went back up hmm. because Teal'c had some really great moments that made him more Teal'c. And as far as the whole episode goes... I enjoyed it. We had to watch it three times, and I still kind of enjoyed it the third time around because that guy's performance, Boy Meets World's dad, is so good, and he's really good at selling this character. And, like, the stuff in it that I liked, I liked a lot. Like, yeah. that conversation between Tilk and that guy I thought was really good where he was like, I didn't rebel against gods. I rebelled against people who pretended to be gods. So... I think I've settled on a three. Oh, wow. That high? Uh, well, like, it's not yeah, that I much higher than 2.5. I was going to give it a 2.5. You know what? I'm still going to give it a 2.5. I think that the problems... I think that, like, it is... Oh, you are right. Uh, like, his, his performance does knock all this material up quite a bit. And mm -hmm. it's almost a shame that he's dead. 
Because yeah, like I felt like it could have been a good antagonist. It would throughout easily the rest be of the like season. a two or a one. Yeah, yeah. I think that like a, a worse actor would have made this character less charismatic, and it's actually kind of sad that like I said we lost him. So eh. yeah, I mean like he's a terrible but also, character. He's, but like he's a terrible character, and then it would have just been episode upon episode of Sam being unable to shoot this fucking moron that's in the true, head. Yeah. Right? Like, it would have just been more Sam being, I am a woman, and so I cannot shoot this man, because I slept yeah. with him, and so I can't shoot him. And it's like, ah, uh, yes, you can. But People yeah. don't need kneecaps to live. I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 3. Yeah, out of 3. So 5. 2.5 <laughs> out of 5. Yeah, and I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. All right, everybody, so join us next time on Stargating because we're going to be looking at episode 107, Cold Lazarus. Uh, in this one, it looks like Jack's injured by some kind of weird alien crystal that uh, makes a copy of him that sends back to Earth and then it wanders around going, what's all this weird Earth stuff? <laughs> oh, I remember this episode. Yes. Oh, yeah. So Jack's got a doppelganger, an alien doppelganger. And it's up to him to wander around doing Not weird stuff. Not his weird clone doppelganger that he ends up sending to high school, but a different doppelganger. Yes. Because they do like making more than one of Jack. Yeah, he, they, he gets around. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching Stargating. It's been a lot of fun. Check out uh, other videos in this channel. We've got some reviews up of Happy Death Day as well as a couple other ones. It's a lot of fun making these videos. Uh, but I've been Chris. And I'm Tamara. Stay safe and be who you are. Bye. Bye.